Hello, everyone. Thank you for your time and attention joining us for our Octopus 101. This is a monthly webinar series that I host. Uh, this is a great webinar series for folks who have never seen Octopus deployed before uh, and are interested in what it is and how it works. My name is John Bristow. I'm the community director for Octopus Deploy. And again, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, this is going to be about 30 minutes of a uh, kind of like a primer to Octopus Deploy, showing you how it works and uh, give you a sense of you know what it looks like. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to submit them into the chat. This is a live webinar, so uh, you'll know you will we'll be able to post questions and answer them live. If you have any questions at all, how about you know how does Octopus work with X or Y? Happy to answer those questions in the next thirty minutes or so. So. Um, to get started, what I'd like to do is um, showcase a few things. Uh, let's let's begin by talking a little bit about Octopus itself. So if you haven't seen us before, this is our website. This is octopus.com. Here you can go and check out our, our, our features of the product. You can learn more about us as a company if you're so inclined. Um, but to get things started, what I'd like to do is just jump over to my slides and talk a little bit about who we are and, and uh, what Octopus is. Um, so if you need to reach me, you can reach me at this email address. Uh, again, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, and uh, again, feel free to let me know if, um, in the chat if you have any questions at all as well. In this webinar, what I hope to address is a bunch of things. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to talk a little bit about how Octopus works and more importantly, why you should use it. So oftentimes when you take a look at a technology, it, it can be very, very daunting and very confusing because you're not understanding the context as to why you might want to use the technology. And so answering the question why I think is just as important. In addition to that, it's also important to understand a lot of the fundamentals we have associated with Octopus itself. So fundamentals include things like projects, deployment processes, releases, et cetera. These terms you'll come to know um, in this webinar. And the reason why that's important is because they describe how things work within Octopus. And then we'll get we'll get going with some uh, demos. We'll talk a little bit about how to create a deployment process, and we'll talk a little bit about how that can integrate with an existing CI process or continuous integration process. Um, an example of that is GitHub Actions, but there's many, many products out there available to you. So to lay the story out, um, let's talk a little bit about deployments. Um, basic deployments are easy. So what I mean by that is deployments that typically you would think of uh, in the sort of early days of your application, you have an app on the left, you have your customers on the right, and in between is possibly yourself or someone else who is responsible for getting the app to the, to the into the hands of your customers. In a lot of scenarios where you're doing automation, it can be very easy to do those automations via deployment scripts that you'll write yourself. Typically, these are written in Bash or PowerShell, and you'll write these and maintain them and deploy to production. However, the problem with deployments is that, like software, they evolve. And so over time, you're, you'll find that your customers you grow to evolve into different scenarios, different, different tenants, um, different requirements. Uh, you may also choose to deploy to different environments, for example. And so you can see that the, the face of the, the DevOps engineer here is getting a little bit upset. You know, uh, the DevOps engineer is wondering, like, okay, how do I maintain this? I've got V1 for customer one. I've got V2 for customer two, did we get the right updates? V3 for customer three, did we ship the right version? You get the idea. Um, so complex deployments um, are, are a little bit more tricky, but this gets incredibly exacerbated when you take a look at how your deployments grow and scale with you. Because as we know, software evolves over time. And so there would be no question that your deployment processes would evolve over time as well. And so now it becomes just this completely complex story and it can get really, really difficult. And so to answer basically how do we solve this, this problem type question, that's where Octopus Deploy comes in. So Octopus Deploy makes complex deployments easy. Deployment is, is now managed by Octopus, and it is your single deployment automation platform. It's sort of like you can think of it as your source of truth for, all, for managing all your enterprise deployment processes with consistency and compliance. In fact, we talk a great deal about that up on our website. If you take a look at our website there, um, you'll see a lot of this listed when we talk about consistency and um, and compliance and a whole bunch of other things. And this is the whole reason why Octopus Deploy exists as a technology. So in addition to that, Octopus Deploy, it, you can think of it as part of a best of breed pipeline. We know that software doesn't live in isolation. And so as a result, we think a lot about 
how Octopus Deploy works well with others. And so an example of this might be looking from left to right, you might have Jira for issue management, GitHub for source control, GitHub Actions as part of your CI process. Something happens in the middle where things get pushed to production and that production environment might be hosted on Azure. Uh, we like to think that a lot of these domains are solved by any number of technologies. It doesn't have to be the ones listed here. Choose the one that you like. Um, but there's a big question mark in terms of deployment, we feel. And so that's where we feel like um, Octopus Deploy comes in. Because the way we look at it is that continuous integration, or CI, is, is largely a solved problem. And, and it's really CD that is not solved, um, continuous delivery. And so Octopus Deploy, um, our mission is to be the enterprise platform solution for CD. And so if you take a look at how we fit in there, um, we feel like this is solved quite well with our solution. Um, it's also the fact that, you know, Octopus Deploy can work well with a variety of other technologies, whether you're using GitHub Actions or maybe Jenkins or TeamCity or something else. Um, you can use any one of those CI processes and integrate with Octopus as part of it. Um, life begins there, but doesn't mean it has to end there. You can always um, utilize Octopus as part of that pipeline. In addition to that, we support a wide variety of targets. Um, these are just some of the targets that we support in terms of cloud providers, but we support Kubernetes, we support uh, deploying to the metal, uh, if you want to deploy directly to IS or Apache or Tomcat, et cetera. These are other types of targets you can totally deploy to. In addition to that, there's um, stuff that exists in the ecosystem as well, things that live around the edges for things like provisioning or change approval, things like that. And that's where you can utilize two technologies like Terraform or ServiceNow. These are other solutions you can certainly use in the context of Octopus Deploy. In fact, we have a Terraform provider uh, for Octopus Deploy. We integrate directly with ServiceNow for change management. So you can approve deployments if you wanted to via ServiceNow, and then that will be triggered through Octopus Deploy. These and other sorts of integrations totally exist. All right. So uh, that is the why. That is the why would I be interested in using Octopus because we feel like we address a need in the marketplace. So let's take a look at a demo and uh, let's get into it here. And again, if you have any questions at all, feel free to submit them into the chat. I'm happy to answer them on the fly. So here is the Octopus Deploy dashboard. So this is the dashboard you'll see or use um, in the context of using Octopus Deploy. It's your one-stop shop for everything. Um, that it relates to your deployments. And you notice here that this, this dashboard here is giving you a, a very primitive sense of what's, what's available to you. Um, what I like to do in these demos is I like to start with um, a, a, basically a blank canvas or slate. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create what's called a new space. A, a space is like an isolation context. It separates your projects from another. So I'll create a new space here. I'm going to call it Octopus 101. And I'm going to make myself an administrator of this because why not? And I'll show you what this looks like when you create a space from scratch. So here I can jump into that space, and now I've got a blank canvas for me to work in. So inside this space, I can create what are called projects, and projects are basically the building blocks of uh, doing your deployments. But let's take a look at how this works. So the first question it's going to ask me is, all right, um, we have this nice guided tour, so we want to create a new project, so let's go ahead and create it. Uh, we can give it the same name, but we'll just say, hello, Octopus 101, for example. Now, inside here, there are a bunch of options that I need to point out. So the first option here is there's this one option here to say use version control for this project. What this is saying is that if you want to back this project using uh, VC, a version control system like Git, you can do that. We'll write text files to your Git repository, and you can actually see um, what those those projects look like in terms of a text format. And what that does is it gives you the ability to also do... Uh, branching, it allows you to persist them to get if you wanted to. So that's a nice option there. There's a bunch of other options associated with this as well. We're not going to worry about those. We're just going to create a new project and create, uh, click on save. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to specify a bunch of environments. Now, we don't have to do this. We can name these anything we want, but we'll just choose the canonical ones that are here. So we'll choose these to be development, staging, and production. And these environments are important in the sense that they allow you to designate where software will be deployed and when. In addition to that, as you'll see, when you define a deployment process, you'll be able to specify various aspects of your deployment process to target um, certain things around your environment. So I'll go ahead and click Save here. And now we're taken into this window here, which is our deployment process window. So the deployment process window is basically the section where you define your deployment processes. So again, we've created a project. 
we've now created a bunch of environments. The, la the next thing we need to do is create a deployment process. A deployment process is the workflow or it's a series of steps that will run to get your software into the hands of, of customers. So to do this, we'll create, a we'll create a process. And inside here, uh, we'll jump into the process editor that allows you to link in a bunch of step templates. Now, step templates are basically the, the building blocks, as I said before, of your process. So steps are things like, you know, deploy to this server, deploy to uh, Kubernetes, um, provision a database, etc. So in here, you'll notice we have a bunch of featured steps. So these are things that a lot of customers tend to use. So we have things like deploy a Helm chart, deploy uh, via customize if you're so inclined, we have other categories as well. So you can see here, like run a script if I wanted to. So this is sort of the catch-all. A lot of customers use this. Um, so running a script is, is easy because it gives you full control. Um, let's go ahead and add that one there. And when you when we add this, you'll notice in this middle section here, it says one, run a script. So this is telling me like the first step is to run a script. And on the right-hand side here is our details page that goes into the specifics of the step itself. So if I collapse all the sections here, you can see there's bunch there's a bunch of knobs and buttons that I can tweak for this particular step. So run a script is exactly that. It just runs a step that runs a script um, for you. Now to define that script, we can say it comes from somewhere inline. So I can define it here. I can also point to a Git repository if I so include, if I so wish, or I can crack open a package like a zip archive and grab the script from there as part of my deployment. And then use that for the deploy for the run the script step. I'm going to choose to just do an inline step. You'll notice that we have a bunch of options as well available to us, so we can actually utilize PowerShell or Bash or what have you. So these are options available to us. Another thing worth mentioning is that we can include a whole bunch of variables as part of our script. Why is this important? Because as you utilize your deployment scripts, as they grow, as you evolve you're gonna to wanna to utilize variables to replace or substitute values as part of your deployment scripts. So the reason why this is relevant is because as you migrate environments or as you target different things, those scripts may need to change. And so variables gives you that flexibility as part of doing that. We utilize a, we utilize a format here called Octostash. So Octostash is the uh, format that we use for defining these things, just a name, it's just like anything else, but I can in inject variables here if I wanted to. Um, for this example here, I'll just say, you know, output something to the host, which is going to go to a task log, which you'll see in a second. And then I can specify a bunch of other options if I wanted to as well. I can specify what environments it's going to run in. I can specify the run condition as well. These are other options I can specify quite easily, which is nice. Um, and I'll go ahead and save the changes here for this run script step. Now, we do validation as part of this. Now, you'll notice here it says, I need to specify one or more roles for this script step to apply to. So in addition to checking to see, you know, are your environments set up, are your targets available, et cetera, we'll also do validation of these. So here we're specifying that we need to actually specify a target role. Now here, I don't have any roles defined. I'll just go ahead and say that this is gonna be a role that I'll add called dev. It doesn't really matter. I can give it any name I want and I'll save that. So. Now that that has been saved, you'll notice that, you know, we can go ahead and actually do a release and a deployment as part of that. So let's go about doing that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna go and um, choose if I so choose, I can go ahead and, and deploy these things out if I wanted to. So you'll notice that we got a bunch of options here if I want. So jumping back to my process here, we've defined a process here that is, um, defined as part of my environments. I can go ahead and uh, choose if I so wish to create a release. Now a release is important in this context here. So a release is a snapshot. It's basically a saved state of all the settings that you've specified for deployment. We haven't deployed anything yet. So the terminology here can get a little confusing, but it's important to, to understand that a release is just something that is ready to go and be deployed. And it's a snapshot of all your values. We can specify things like a version number here, we can use semantic versioning if we wish. Uh, you can provide a, a whole bunch of values. We can also incorporate release notes as part of this release. Um, you can also auto-generate these if you so wish. You can utilize release notes as part of um, Git commits if you wanted to. You can integrate those as part of this release. We'll go ahead and save this release. And you'll notice that when we save this release, we've persisted all the values that were uh, part of constructing the deployment. So 
uh, the various environments are, are saved and they're they're part of what we call life cycle. If I had any packages associated with like this, um, so any DLLs, any binaries, any zip archives, etc., cetera, um, NuGet packages, uh, all kinds of packages would be associated there. Uh, resources associated with Git, variables associated with the release as well, uh, and anything else associated with this. Now, once I'm ready, I can go ahead and choose to de deploy this to... Uh, my deployment environment that I've set up earlier. So you can see here, it's gonna specify a bunch of settings. Now, the deployment itself can be controlled in a variety of ways. I can specify when I wanna do a deployment, either now or later. I can specify other options like, hey, uh, that that run a script step, I'm going, I don't wanna run that uh, in this instance. I wanna skip that. So you have a lot of flexibility and control over how deployments are done. So you have to imagine the sort of scenarios you would want to, to execute as part of the deployment and then look at how the environment will give you that flexibility. Let's go ahead and hit deploy. And this is gonna do nothing but simply run against an instance that we have available up in the cloud. So this is um, running here as part of a deployment here. Um, this deployment is targeting a cloud environment. And you'll see that we get a running log of all the things that are occurring on the execution itself. So it's actually deploying here to the production. And we have a task log that's quite nice and detailed here. Uh, if we take a look at all the values here specified um, you can see that, um, oh, we actually specified to skip that. I should have actually specified not to skip that, but there you go. Uh, but you can see that we, we get all the tasks associated with that, and we can see them show up here. Uh, we also get a task summary. If I had a lot of um, execution of those being run, uh, we could see those occurring. We get a list of changes that went into this. Of course, there were no changes. This is just a, a primitive demo of, of how it works. But this is essentially how release is conducted as part of Doctopus Deploy. So Octopus Deploy allows you to define these things and then execute these as part of your deployments. Now, if I jump back to the dashboard here, you'll notice there's my project that I created and there's my release that I've now um, made available to development. And if I wanted to, uh, if I had options associated with targets, et cetera, I could actually promote releases accordingly as part of that. So there you go. That's a very simple example of uh, how things look and work in terms of Octopus. Now, to talk a little bit more about what you've seen and how things work. Um, it's important to understand that as you build these processes out, they'll get quite elaborate. Um, so you'll you'll notice that we provide you a visual representation of all the deployment processes that, that you've created. So these include things like conditions, so you can specify whether or not a step will run, uh, whether the previous one ran successfully or not. You can also include what are called child steps. So child steps allow you to run things after the fact, or you can run them in parallel. So you can have concurrent steps running at the same time. We integrate with Markdown, so you can delegate, um, you can you can provide some some form of, of notation to your team. Um, and then you can tell people on your team, like this is what this step does, for example. And those are based on Markdown. As I mentioned before, we have parallel step execution. So you can run these in parallel, which is nice in, in the case that you're doing different things to different environments. Let's say you're provisioning a database on one server and a web server on the other. You can do those in parallel and have them have them run. And then finally, and this is really where things get really powerful, this concept of environments, you can actually specify certain steps of your deployment only run in certain environments. And this is something that you don't see a lot in, say for example, CI processes where People use CI a lot for, for doing deployments, and we feel like that's not a really good place to do deployments. So things like environment labels and, and such are exposed to you so you can see where these things get deployed. Now, talking a little bit more about the why and the how, um, Octopus Deploy provides you this environment that gives you reliable and, most importantly, risk-free deployments with rollback capabilities. This is something that you don't get through deployment scripts. Deployment scripts is kind of like a one-shot. Uh, deal. And it's all about pushing out to a production and rolling the, the train only rolls forward, as they say. Um, there's no rollback capabilities in those scenarios. But with Octopus Deploy, you have that ability. So you can actually have that and it's built in as part of it, which means you can easily revert changes uh, quickly. Um, we're the only release management tool that your operations team can use as well. And so we have a feature in Octopus Deploy called roll, uh, called Runbooks. And what this allows you to do is you can define a runbook which will automate sort of routine or emergency tasks. So uh, update the database server with the latest software updates or um, if the web server melts or uh, a customer complains, perform these steps. And 
you can persist as part of that runbook, um, cre- like credentials, which are which will be, uh, remain secure, and you can perform those sorts of tasks automatically through that capability. And we find that runbooks is a nice way of, of pairing with release management because often the two are 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 one and one and the same. Um, in addition to that, if you're working with c- containers at all, if you're integrating with Kubernetes or you want to utilize um, containers in, in a very rich way, we can actually utilize those capabilities very, very quickly. So we, you saw examples of that in Octopus Deploy, the demo I just showed where you can integrate with Customize or YAML, et cetera. Uh, we have support for Helm. There's a whole bunch of features we have in, in Octopus that are now available. And another feature we have in Octopus is this feature called tenants. So tenants are a way of doing deployments to a variety of customers that vary by um, specific capabilities um, or, in this case, um, intangible things like uh, geolocations. So an example of this would be like, let's say I want to deploy to a variety of stores. I have some in the East Coast. I have some in the West Coast. I can utilize a feature called tenants, which will represent those stores accordingly. They're sort of akin to environments, but they represent targets and their um, their capability. This capability is allows you to do deployments across those things very easily. As I mentioned before, we have integration with um, a, a whole bunch of, of ancillary uh, solutions that people like to use, for example, like ServiceNow, but we have a support for other things as well. So some examples, and this isn't all of it, but it's just some examples. That task log that you saw earlier, you can integrate that with like Sumo Logic or Splunk. Um, you can output those directly if you so wish. Um, not just ServiceNow, but also Jira Service Management if you wanted to. So these and other sorts of things, um, single sign-on, et cetera, gives you uh, really good uh, capabilities around governance, risk, and compliance, as mentioned here. All right, let's take a look at another example here. And again, just to remind you all, um, if you have any questions, feel free to take advantage of the chat there. I'm going to jump over to another example here showing the dashboard. Um, This is one where we have lots and lots of different spaces. Um, This is our samples instance, which, by the way, is public. You can access it at samples.octopus.app, and you can check out all the various spaces we have there. Um, Looking at this example here, you can see we have a bunch of different project groups with projects in them with various versions that have been deployed to various environments that have been executed. Now, the, the example I want to point out here is how this integrates with the CI process. So here I have an Octopus Deploy instance. It's ready to go. It's doing deployment successfully. But you might ask yourself, like, how does how does the deployment actually kick off through an automation? So typically that's done through a CI process or a continuous integration process where I do a, a build, then I do a test, and now I'm ready to punt it over to Octopus to do the deployment. The way that you'll do this is through a lot of different integrations we support. So we have integrations with Octop- um, with GitHub. So we have a GitHub app as well as a lot of uh, custom actions that you can use. So these you can specify as part of your workflow. And to show you an example of this, you know, workflows uh, that are defined in GitHub Actions are done so via YAML. And so here's an example of a process. So these are found in the GitHub slash workflows uh, folder of your repository. And you'll notice here we're utilizing a bunch of different uh, GitHub actions to create releases, like you saw earlier, um, deploy uh, releases as well. These are exposed through these actions that we have available. Now, if you don't like doing this and you want to do this automatically, there are capabilities that you can take advantage of, namely the GitHub app, which we just shipped recently. Um, And this has just been made available like, like last week. So that's pretty awesome. Um, but these these actions are are really there to help you integrate those um, scenarios as well. Another example might be Azure DevOps. So Azure DevOps is a very popular tool of choice for folks who are doing CI processes. Um, it's pretty powerful. And here's an example of a pipeline that we have exposed that utilizes um, our built-in integration. So we can do you know pushing packages to Octopus. So this is like pushing uh, binaries up to Octopus to use in the case of you know, deployments, for example, or I can create releases. These and other scenarios we support as part of our integration with Azure DevOps. Uh, another example might be um, integration with TeamCity. So TeamCity is a very popular CI server uh, provided by JetBrains, and we are actually the number one integration uh, up on the marketplace. So people tend to use um, Octopus Deploy if they're using TeamCity quite a bit. Um, so these and other scenarios, Jenkins, et cetera, they're all supported as part of this. Um, we have Circle CI, Jenkins, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of different CI processes that you can integrate with. And if you're not happy with any of those scenarios, you can certainly utilize it in the context of 
other uh, environments as well. We also have a CLI that you can take advantage of. So these and other sorts of uh, tools you can use. And you'll find these up at our, our website, which is at octopus.com. And if you go under our resources, and there's a section here for downloads. Um, if you wanted to, you could download our CLI. And uh, you can use that in, in the context of any automation you wish. So um, CLI is, is super powerful, allows you to do all kinds of operations as well. So you can wire up these automations yourself if you so wish. Jumping back to the dashboard here, just taking a look at some other examples here, you can see um, if we jump into one of these examples here, this is just an arbitrary example, I'm just picking out of the blue. If we take a look at the process here. The processes themselves can get quite elaborate. You can have lots and lots of different steps associated with them. And you'll notice here that we have some steps here that look different. So we have, you know, send a Slack notification, then create a database uh, in MySQL, and then run a tool here called Flyway, which is from Redgate. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So these and other types of operations you can certainly customize if you so wish. Um, you can certainly change things, and I can, for example, add a step here. Taking a look at the various steps we have available, I showed you this section before. So you have there featured steps, you have built-in steps, etc. Um, looking at some of the other examples of steps that we have, so here's support for Kubernetes. If you're targeting Azure, for example, or you're targeting AWS, uh, if you want to integrate Terraform, you can certainly do that. You can run. Terraform plans, uh, if you so wish, uh, as part of your deployment process. So you can provision infrastructure via Terraform if you wanted. These and other types of steps are available for you. These are all built in as part of the Octopus experience. Now, a question that comes up a lot is, well, what if you don't have support for a certain feature that I'm looking for? Like, let's say I'm using some Acme Corp solution uh, software, and I want to integrate with that. We have a series of community steps that are also available for you to use. We have five. We have over 500 community step templates for you to use. And these uh, show, uh, as we say here, there's a whole bunch of different steps here that you can run available from the community. So if there's one that we don't support out of the box, you can certainly get one from the community. And as I said, we have over 500 ones. And these range from MySQL integration to HashiCorp Vault integration. Some of these, by the way, have been written by um, members of the Octopus team. But these and other sorts of steps you can certainly utilize. Integration with Pulumi, integration with Team City, for example. So these and other types of steps you can certainly run as part of this process, which is great. Awesome. Um, once again, just reminding you, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them there. Um, okay, I don't see any questions, which is great. Awesome. Either everything's super crystal clear or it's not. All right, so uh, that's wrapping up our time for this webinar. As I said, it's going to be quick. It's sort of like a kick the tires sort of session, which is fine. Um, so here's what I hope you learned in this webinar. Um, you learned how Octopus works and why you should use. That's really important. Um, you learned some of the fundamentals, such as projects, deployment processes, and releases. We showed you how to create a deployment uh, process from scratch, and I showed you how that integrates or triggers through a CI process. In this example, uh, it was with GitHub Actions. Uh, believe me, there's more. <laughs> there's a lot more you can do with Octopus Deploy, which is awesome. Uh, and as I said, there's a bunch of things that you can certainly use. So as an example, there's a there's a whole bunch of community step templates that you can use if you want. Um, if there's a feature we don't support out of the box, I'm sure our community supported it. If you want, you can download and install a trial version of Octopus either on-prem or in the cloud today. So one thing I haven't shown you yet is how to actually get started. Uh, to get started, you just go to octopus.com, and in the middle of the screen of our website, you'll see a big green button, uh, which is Start a Trial. You can click on that, and you can provision a instance of Octopus Deploy or Octopus Cloud, which is our on-prem solution. Uh, if you want, you can also download um, the server version of this if you want to install on your own machine, which is fine. <clears throat> so jumping back to... Uh, so you can download a bunch of other technologies as well. Uh, there's a bunch of things there. We also highlight every release. So we just shipped 2024.1, a bunch of features that are available there. And we're also very transparent in terms of things that are coming next. So this is a screenshot of our roadmap. You'll find this at roadmap.octopus.com. So we, we are very, very uh, cognizant of the fact that folks who take... Um, take on software, they want to see a lot of changes, uh, for example, to see that their investment is improving over time. And here you can see of things, all the things that we have planned, things that are under consideration is also, also things that we've recently shipped. And the nice thing about the roadmap is you can also submit your own ideas if you so wish. So feel free to let us know. 
or you can also vote up or down the features that we've shipped here as part of this environment, which is great. Um, so feel free to let us know if you have any uh, features that you'd like to see going forward as part of Octopus Deploy. Um, one thing I just want to mention, um, we have a great community of folks like yourself who are talking about deployments, et cetera, CI, CD. You can find us up on our Slack channel. So you can join our community Slack if you so wish. You'll find us at octopus.com slash community. In addition to that, we have a bunch of other programs as well, a bunch of resources um, to highlight some of those things. Um, you'll see we have a, a channel up on YouTube. So you'll find videos that we publish almost daily, uh, if not weekly bunch of videos for you to understand how Octopus works and why it does the things that it does. Um, we also have a bunch of webinars that are also coming up. So you'll find these at slash webinars. The one that you're attending is this one here. Coming up, we have a bunch of webinars that you can check out. We've got a webinar called the State of CICD 2024, where myself and Steve, a member of my team, will be taking a look at the CICD report from the CD Foundation. We have a webinar here um, featuring um, Paul O'Reilly from uh, uh, Codefresh and Nathan Harvey from Google talking about uh, Dora and Dora metrics, which we have support for integrated within Octopus, by the way. Uh, we've got Bob Walker talking about Kubernetes for the rest of us. And then we've got Michael and Dylan talking about the new GitHub app that I highlighted in this demo. Uh, we're going to be doing a webinar on June 6th talking about that. So these and other webinars we've got planned coming up. We've got more coming as well. So feel free to check those out at octopus.com slash demo or slash webinars. And as I said, everything uh, will be recorded and pushed out to our various channels, including uh, YouTube. Awesome. So that about wraps it up. Thank you for your time and attention. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Let me know. Otherwise, um, you can check out our YouTube channel, which I highlighted. A recording of this webinar will be made available there today. So you'll be able to watch it back if there's anything you missed. And we'll be hosting these uh, monthly. So we'll, our next Octopus 101 will be in June. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have there. Until next time, happy deployments, as we say to everyone. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Take care, everyone.